please do not lick the boat with your tongue. It'll only make it sticky. Daddy, said Veronica Salt, I want a boat just like this. I want you to buy me a big pink boiled sweet boat exactly like Mr. Wonka's. And I want lots of Oompa Loompas to row me about. And I want a chocolate river. And I want, and I want. She wants a good kick in the pants, whispered Grandpa Joe to Charlie. The old man was sitting in the back of the boat and little Charlie Bucket was right beside him. Charlie was holding tightly onto his grandfather's bony old hand. He was in a whirl of excitement. Everything that he had seen so far, the great chocolate river, the waterfall, the huge sucking pipes, the candy meadows, the Oompa Loompas, the beautiful pink boat, and most of all, Mr. Willy Wonka himself had been so astonishing that he began to wonder whether there could possibly be any more as astonishments left. Where were they going now? What were they going to see? And what in the world was going to happen in the next room? Isn't it marvelous, said Grandpa Joe, grinning at Charlie. Charlie nodded and smiled up at the old man. Suddenly, Mr. Wonka, who was sitting in Charlie's on Charlie's other side, reached down into the bottom of the boat, picked up a large mug, dipped it into the river, filled it with chocolate, and handed it to Charlie. Drink this, he said. It'll do you good. You look starved to death. Then Mr. Wonka filled a second mug and gave it to Grandpa Joe. You too, he said. You look like a skeleton. What's the matter? Hasn't there been anything to eat in your house lately? Not much, said Grandpa Joe. Charlie put the mug to his lips, and as the rich, warm, creamy chocolate ran down his throat into his empty tummy, his whole body from head to toe began to tingle with pleasure and a feeling of intense happiness spread over him. You like it? asked Mr. Wonka. Oh, it's wonderful, Charlie said. The creamiest, loveliest chocolate I've ever tasted, said Grandpa Joe, smacking his lips. That's because it's been mixed by waterfall, Mr. Wonka told him. The boat sped on down the river. The river was getting narrower. There was some kind of dark tunnel ahead, a great round tunnel that looked like an enormous pipe and the river was running right into the tunnel, and so was the boat. Row on, shouted Mr. Wonka. Jump up, waving his stick in the air, Fill speed, full speed ahead, and with the Oompa Loompas rolling faster than ever, the boat shot into the pitch dark tunnel, and all the passengers screaming with excitement, how can they see where they're going, shrieked Violet Beauregard in the darkness. There's no knowing where they're going, cried Mr. Wonka, hooting with laughter. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction they are going. There's no knowing where they're rowing or which way the river's flowing. Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing from the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any sign that they are slowing. It's gone off his rocker, shouted one of the fathers, aghast, and the other parents joined the chorus of frightening shouting. He's crazy, they shouted. He's foamy, he's nutty, he's screwy, he's batty, he's dippy, he's dotty, he's daffy, he's goofy, he's beany, he's buggy, he's wacky, he's loony. No, he is not, said Grandpa Joe.